So because of um, the lack of the Erasmus program, uh, I think the whole of the European Union, Germany has lost only in the last study year 50% of students. So we have now, if we take everything together, all the students, uh, uh, undergraduate, graduate, um, around 120,000 from the European Union studying in the United Kingdom. So that's less than the number of students from India or China. And the numbers will continue to drop. And whenever I go to universities and meet students, they tell me that they could not have started studying in the United Kingdom without something like Erasmus, because they have to pay now overseas tuition fees, and that makes it, obviously, with the cost of living, extremely difficult. So what we are trying to do is, and we will continue, is to try to convince the British government, this government, or the next government um, to rejoin Erasmus. I think that is definitely, for us, a political objective. And I think we need to continue this dialogue. We need to continue to talk about it. Um, because, you know, wherever I go here, I meet so many Germans living in the United Kingdom who came to this country studying in, in the UK and then decided to stay here, to have a family, to work. But the entrance point has been in many, many thousands of cases, really the fantastic possibility to study in this country. So what we are trying to do in the meantime, in the meantime, is to try to support youth exchange, which is also challenging, I can tell you, because now um, we have, for example, for school exchanges, more or less everywhere in the European Union, you have um, in a class, you have uh, pupils who are from a third country. So they not even the passport is enough. They would need a visa to come to the UK. And then in many, many cases, the school decide that's too complicated for us. We go to, to, uh, to another country, to Ireland, to Malta, whatever. So what we are trying to do is to find an agreement with the British government to allow visa-free travel for schools. Very important. What we have achieved, that's the first small point, is that when we had the strategic dialogue between um, our ministries, that we agreed to open, we call it United Kingdom, Germany Connect, UKGC, an office in Bonn which will support youth exchange, school exchange programs. Because as we know, it's not only the question of visas or the question of passport, it's also all the paperwork which needs to be done, all the support which schools need in order to maintain this level of exchange. But let me also say that uh, um, this reduction I see goes beyond, it goes beyond schools, it goes beyond universities. I see it really in every field. And uh, um, the number, for example, of parliamentary contacts has been reduced. Um, the, the, what we need, and, and that's really an essential element of our work, is to keep this fantastic level we had before of cooperation and, and, and of working together. In foreign policy, I can tell you it's working fine. If I look at Ukraine, um, cooperation on strengthening Ukraine against Russia's war of aggression, if we speak about many G7 topics or NATO topics, these contacts are ongoing at the same high level we had before. But there are many other areas where, uh, uh, regrettably, from our point of view, it has been reduced. And the future of these contacts it is the exchange between young people. So what we are trying to do is to strengthen university to university agreements, because universities once they have an agreement, they have the possibility to waive the tuition fees. And that at least gives, in my assessment, 10% or 15% the possibility to study under the same conditions we had before. And I must really commend Wales. Wales has, with a tithe program, 
the first program, which is not only like touring outgoing, but which also supports students from the European Union coming here. And um, so we are reaching also out to, to Scotland to see if they don't want to have a similar program. But these are all only small steps compared, obviously, to a rejoining uh, uh, of Erasmus. The last thing I would like to mention, which I, I think is also a pity, is that um, what we are losing or where we are losing is on language learning. And um, uh, I know that it's much more fancy to speak Spanish and French than German. German is a bit more complicated, maybe. But if I look, for example, at the A-levels, only 3% of A-levels are in Germany. GCSE exams, only 38,000 in the whole country. So if I look at the development, and it started well uh, before Brexit, we have lost more than 50% of those learning languages. And um, in my view, it has a lot to do with the fact that languages are not mandatory in the British school system. And this decision, I think, was the starting point of the decline of, of language learning. So I don't know if uh, this or the future or any future government is, is willing to look at that. But uh, my personal experience has always been that language learning is basic in order uh, really to, to have an, uh, a different access to another country. If you speak the language, you have the contacts, you develop the contacts. And obviously for uh, all our British friends here, it's easy and speak English, but nevertheless, it's not the same than speaking German, French, Spanish, mm -hmm. Italian or any other language. So let me end by saying that I, I really commend the work you are doing. It's fantastic to see that there are people like you who are interested in maintaining this context with Europe um, to, to, to foster the cooperation um, within Europe. And so let me say we will definitely continue to, to support your work. And it's important that you continue with that and that we um, uh, yeah, have this dialogue also with politics in order to try to change some of the things which, in my view, should be should be possible. So thank you for the invitation.